Israel is expensive, crowded, people have no sense of personal space, and the slow drivers always drive in the middle lane. I want you to visit Israel. My whole channel and website is dedicated to encouraging you to do just that. However, there are some things that you are not going to like, and in this video I'm going to talk about what bothers tourists in Israel, and more importantly, what you can do about it. Let's dive straight in with the biggest problem. Israel is expensive. Before tourists come to Israel, their biggest concern is always safety. But once here, they feel safe and realize that they are safe. I've heard from so many Americans that walking at night in Jerusalem and Tel Aviv is much safer than most big cities in the US. Their biggest problem in Israel is that everything is so expensive. Tel Aviv is one of the most expensive cities in the world, and the average night in a hotel in Israel costs $240, which is insane. Restaurants are also really expensive. If you have the money, great, but remember that $200 a night is less than average. The good boutique hotels and five-star hotels start at $400 a night. If you can't or don't want to spend that much on accommodation, then there are great hostels where you can get a private room for about a hundred bucks. My last video recommended a few hostels in Jerusalem, and on my website you can find a post I wrote with all my recommendations for loads of different types of accommodation. All the links will be below. When it comes to food, then again, if you have the money, go ahead and enjoy the great restaurants. If not, you will want to eat the amazing Israeli street food instead. Falafel, shawarma, and sabich are probably the best known dishes, but there are so many other things to try. For 30 to 50 shekels, so 10 to 15 bucks, you can get some really amazing dishes. And Israeli street food is also relatively healthy, with a lot of vegetables and less low quality meat. There are some areas where the prices are more reasonable. Renting cars, some public transportation, entrance fees to parks and museums, and I think that's about it. But with all that being said, when traveling, you are spending your, your most valuable and actually your only real valuable asset, your time. Traveling is not about saving money. It's about enjoying your time, even if it costs a bit more. On to the next thing. There is no public transportation on weekends and Jewish holidays. I've seen so many travelers getting stuck because of this one. You can always take a taxi, which costs more on weekends, but remember that there are no buses and trains from two hours before sunset on Friday until two to three hours after sunset on Saturdays. The same goes for Jewish holidays. If you bring all those days together, then in a year there are more than two months without public transportation. How do you know whether there is a Jewish holiday and when the sun sets in November? I've made a video about recommended apps, and some of them are apps about transportation, where you can find out all this information. I will leave a link to it below. Spelling and names of places. This is a small one, but it can be important. Israelis can speak relatively good English. The Israeli accent tends to be heavy, but not as bad as mine. I have no idea why my accent is so heavy. I've lived in Sydney for two years, the US for two years, in Alaska and Connecticut, in Germany for 10 years, and yet people tell me I have a heavy French accent. Anyway, all the road signs are in English as well, and TV series and movies are in English with Hebrew subtitles, which is great but we are terrible at spelling. I'm not sure what the reason is, but I think it's partly due to the fact that in Hebrew, we almost never use vowels, which is why the words in Hebrew are so short. And we don't use the same letter twice unless we pronounce it. Think about it. There is no reason why accommodation has two C's and two M's. If you wrote accommodation with one C and one M, the word would be short and everyone would still understand it. So if you are making a reservation or giving someone your email, make sure that your name is spelled correctly. Another thing is that sometimes the Hebrew names is translated and sometimes it is transcribed. 
Outside Jaffa Gate in Jerusalem, there is Jaffa Road. On some maps, it is written as Jaffa, but on others, it is written as Yafo. In South Tel Aviv, there is a road called Derech Salame. On some maps, it is written as Salame Road, and on others as Derech Salame or Shlomo Road. I think that Caesarea, Caesarea in, in Hebrew, can be written in four different ways, with C, with Q, with K. So, you know, be, be aware of that. Next up is driving. The roads in Israel are good and the signs, as I said, are also written in English, but Israelis are not the most considerate of drivers. When two lanes merge into one, or when you need to turn into traffic, you may wonder if you have suddenly developed superpowers and become invisible. Nobody can see you. And the second the traffic light turns green, someone behind you will honk their horn. Oh, and in Israel, um, if there are three lanes, the slowest people drive in the middle lane. I don't know why I can't explain it. This is all very annoying and I hope that Israelis will become more considerate on the roads. I have nothing smart to say about it other than what I always say. When in the cities you don't need a car, try to rent a car only when going to the Galilee or the Negev. Staying on the roads, the next one is taxi drivers. A worldwide problem is that of taxi drivers um, charging tourists more than they should. Taxi drivers must use a meter. If they don't, you will get scammed. When getting into a taxi, the first thing you have to do is make sure that the driver is using the meter. You can also use the apps Israeli use, Get and Yango. There are also problems with the app, as sometimes the drivers ask for more money than what it says on the meter but in general, it is better to use the apps. Standing in line. When English people stand in line, you have one person standing there and behind him or her, a fair distance away, another person, and you know, so on. As for the Israeli queue, one person stands there and guards his position as the first in line. Behind him are two people standing so close, he can like smell the onion they ate for lunch. Behind those two are four more people and so on. If you are standing in line and someone tries to cut in front of you, tell him or her that you were there before them. Next, shopping in the old city of Jerusalem. The prices in Israel are fixed. You will be able to see the price labeled on the product. There are only two, maybe three markets where the price will be determined by your face, and you will be visiting them both. There are flea market in Jaffa and in the old city of Jerusalem. Most shop owners are honest guys trying to make a living, but there are also a few unpleasant shop owners, mostly in the Muslim quarter, along the Via Dolorosa, and around the Church of the Holy Sepulcher. Some merchants can be highly aggressive and even swear at you. Don't tolerate aggressive behavior and just walk away. If you are being pressured to buy, you are probably being scammed. Some will try to give you things and not accept them back. My best advice is to ask the price before you touch the item and to not feel obliged to buy from them. You will be able to find most of what they sell in 50 other shops. Feel free to compare prices and to haggle. There are a few old tricks you need to look out for, like in restaurants next to the Church of the Holy Sepulchre. They give you the menu and you order falafel because the falafel costs $7, which is fair. But then they bring you the big falafel plate and charge you $25 for it which is a total ripoff. A few weeks ago in the Galilee, I met a follower of my channel who had fallen for it, even though I warned viewers about it in an earlier video, and I can totally understand that. If you're in Jerusalem visiting all those places, you can't remember all the tips I gave you in a video you saw six months ago. So I thought about it and decided to add all the warnings to my app. I will say something more about that at the end of the video. On to the next point too crowded. Israel is a tiny country. You hear so much about Israel, but it is actually super tiny. Israel is the size of New Jersey. Wisconsin is nine times bigger than Israel. There are 10 million people living in Israel, and many of their tourist sites are on the small side. There are a few things you can do in order to avoid the crowds. The first is to visit the sites at less popular times, when they are not so busy. I love visiting the Western Wall at night. It is open 24-7, and in the evening or at night, it isn't as hot and crowded and feels very peaceful. The Church of the Holy Sepulchre opens at 5 a.m. 
if you can come before 8.30, you will enjoy the visit much more. When the church is full, it gets really loud, you get pushed about, and it can even get hard to breathe. Another thing is that people on vacation forget that the rest of the world is still going to work. Try to visit Galilee and Negev during the week when the Israelis are working, so Sunday to Thursday. It will be cheaper and the national parks won't be as crowded. The next tip is small, but I know that some of you will really thank me for it. Cold in closed places. Israel is a hot country and the Israelis are in love with their air conditioners. The Israeli way of thinking is this. If it is going to be that hot outside, let's make it freezing inside. Trains, museums, shopping malls, buses. If you suffer from the cold, do yourself a favor and even on the hottest days, have something to cover up with. The last thing on my list, Israel is just too interesting. Really, it can, it can be overwhelming. Meir Shalev, a famous Israeli writer, once wrote that whenever you are in Israel, if you throw a stone, you are bound to hit a crazy man or a holy site. A perfect example of this is the old city of Jerusalem. In this single square kilometer, you have the third holiest site for Muslims, the holiest site for Jews, the holiest site for Christians, and dozens of mosques, churches, and synagogues, all in one square kilometer. Israel itself, in a way, is like the old city of Jerusalem, tiny and yet so diverse and full of history. Israel, as the Holy Land, is the final destination for pilgrims, pioneers, and believers. But at the same time, Israel is a corridor, a meeting point where the desert meets the sea, where the empires of the East fought the empires of the West, and where the divine meets the ordinary. It is a bit noisy in this corridor, but you should definitely come and visit. That's it. If there are any other things that you like or didn't like about Israel, then please let me know by leaving a comment below. If you are planning to visit Israel in the next few months, and if you can understand my English, then go ahead and purchase my app, and you will enjoy your trip so much more. As I said, I've added my tips about where you need to be more alert, where you had better not change money, where the sellers are aggressive, and all the places where the scammers come together. I've added the shops run by honest guys who sell unique goods, and also where the good hummus joints are. There are also coupons code for 10% of various hostels and tours in Jerusalem, Tel Aviv, and Eilat. And the most important thing, my Jerusalem tours, you can see where you are on the map, where the next stop is, and watch a video with me explaining what you are looking at. The app is only about Jerusalem. In my booklets, you will also find my Tel Aviv and Masada tours. Um, that's it. See you next time. Yalla bye.